Hello, good evening and welcome to uh, this special edition of Eye on Paul that we have uh, begun on this network. Uh, we have moved all the way from the port environment with all those heavy equipment and then bring you into the studio once again. Like we said last week, the idea is to let you understand and interact with the men and women who are in charge in the port directly. It gives you that opportunity so you are able to phone in, you are able to send a text message and then interact with them. And then also it gives them the opportunity to directly tell you what their agencies do within the port environment there. It gives you a clear understanding of the picture in the ports. Now, this program is proudly brought to you by the Ghana Revenue Authority, also West Blue Consulting, Ghana Community Network Services, GCNet, and Ghana uh, Oil Company Limited. I should tell you, though, that Ghana uh, Oil Company Limited, GOIL, is no longer Ghana Oil Company Limited. It is now uh, GOIL Company Limited. So if it sounds confusing, forget about the Ghana oil. Just make it Goyal Company Limited. <laughs> my guests are already laughing. Uh, my guests today, uh, very important personalities from the port industry there. You recall that two weeks ago we had the president of the Ghana Institute of Freight Forwarders, uh, Mr. Kwabeno Fusuapi, as well as uh, Madam Paperless herself, Madam Esther Jibidonko, in the studio. Now, last week, we had the Assistant Commissioner of Customs Division and uh, also Sector Commander at the Tema Port in the studio, all trying to explain uh, their responsibilities in the port environment, uh, environment. This week, very important persons when it comes to doing business at the ports that you can never go past. And they are in the studio. We're going to delve deeper into what they do. I'll start off quickly with uh, Mr. Uh, Farof Adam Imoro Ayana. Mr. Ayana, good to see you. Thank you. I've dragged you all the way from Cape Coast to be here. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure that uh, you were able to make it. He's an uh, executive member of the Ship Owners and Agents Association of Ghana at uh, the ports there. And also, Next after him is Stephen Edu. Mr. Stephen Edu is the head of Imports uh, Inspection Ghana uh, uh, Standards Authority. You know GSA and <laughs> Shippers Authority and Standards Authority. Yeah. If you are not careful, you know, the GSA confuses you. So Mr. Edu is with the Standards Authority at the port. So they inspect all the standards. We'll be delving into that as well. And then my own man, Mr. Jacob Amwa is with Food and Drugs Authority is a head operations import and export control. Jake, pleasure to have you in here. So, folks, uh, these are the men who are going to deal with the issues that you have been confronted with in the port environment as we go on. The numbers, again, if you're interested in calling or if you've ever encountered any uh, issue dealing with the port in these areas, Food and Drugs Authority, uh, Standards Authority, or the shipping lines, this week alone, after last week, we met with AC here. This week alone, 14 people came to my office asking for one thing or the other, Ms. Diana, regarding the shipping line. So if you're interested, 055-3000-035 is the number, or you can WhatsApp 020-866-3161 are the numbers that you can reach us on. In the meantime, folks, a lot of things are happening around the port and maritime industry. Uh, the past week wasn't too pleasant. We had two of the transit truck drivers uh, who encountered very bizarre incident around Mali. They had gone past Ghana, gone past Burkina Faso, uh, the border town of Mali. It's called a Kuri uh, town. That's a border town. That's where, unfortunately, they met their untimely death. They were shot down by some people that we can't tell their identity as a stance. Take a listen. Two Ghanaian transit truck drivers have been shot and killed at the Malian border town of Kuri. The two, believed to be Mohammed Moumin and Suleiman Gariba, had stopped at a security barrier near the Burkina Faso to Mali border in the town called Kuri to go and settle their usual travel arrangements while negotiating the fees to be paid with the security officials close to the barrier armed men described as alleged members of some terrorist group attacked the drivers as well as the other security officers at the barrier instantly seven people which comprised two Malian gendarmerie 
two Malian Juan, one civilian assistant to the Malian Duan, and the two Ghanaian truck drivers were shot and killed. The conductors, or driver mates, upon witnessing the incident, bolted and are alive currently recounting the incident. The remains of the murdered Ghanaian truck drivers and the five others have so far been deposited at a mortuary in Kuchala, a small town 20 kilometers away from the Malian border town of Kuri. The trucks were conveying floor tiles from the port of Takradi in Ghana to be delivered to one importer in the Malian capital, Bamako. A homeland security expert and a criminal profiler of the Hatwan Institute who addressed the issue said the state Ghana security, security well. agencies of Ghana issue. should build more capacity as a matter of urgency, making sure Ghana is well equipped to prevent such occurrences from happening in the country. You see what is happening in Burkina Faso. It's a cross-border issue. Very sensitive. We cannot say we're going to close our borders to the people, right? But we, as an autonomous country, we need to sit down, do our homework, or, and defend this country. Because Boko Haram, they are operating there. Nobody knows. They can even cross here and do something. But once we make sure all the borders are secured and our security apparatus are on top of the game, when we are proactive, in other words, when we, we have proactive policing, and then the executive do the right thing, and I know they are doing the right thing, okay, and equip them so that they will be on top of the game, we will get the right. He advised state security agencies as well as civilians to prioritize intelligence sharing in order to forestall any form of acts of terror by organized criminals who could invade our country space. We have to train people how to gather intelligence. Everything is about intelligence. What do I mean by intelligence? You send something fishy, somebody's doing something, you have to report it to the police. When you report it, it shouldn't end there. We should have a local number, a local number, or by any suspicious activity, nefarious activity will be reported. However, Iron Port is reliably informed that the Minister of Security in Mali said the military is being deployed to tighten security at the borders to ensure such events do not happen again. He said the security blocks along the corridor could be increased in order to avoid criminal groups from laying ambush on truck drivers who use the corridor. Also, the legal fee of 1,000 sefa paid at the Kuri borders to the customs has been halted indefinitely in order to eliminate the stoppages that have proved to be dangerous. Consequently, the Joint Association of Port Transport Union are also appealing that transit trucks be escorted by the police anytime they embark on a transit trip to serve as security. Esther Jebidonko, General Manager Marketing and Corporate Affairs of GPHA, assured the transit community, especially the truck drivers, of the Port Authority's commitment to liaise with authorities in the Sahelian countries to put in place measures that would ensure safe passage on the corridors without compromise. We send our condolences to them and we want to assure them that the Port Authority is doing all um, within its capabilities to also intervene in this matter to forestall uh, peace in, in that area. She encouraged the drivers to also take good care of themselves in their journeys. We have been informed by the drivers union that they would wish that uh, the Malian authorities will organize some police escorts for them in these few days so that they'll feel safer. Where the Port Authority has discussed with the representative of Emega here and uh, she has asked that we make a formal request and then that will be passed on to um, the authorities that will handle this and we hope that once we present the formal uh, request some action will be taken and our drivers will feel safer okay so that was the unfortunate incident that we encountered it happened on sunday evening i think about uh, 11 p.m there about uh, wasn't pleasant at all but we are told that measures have been put in place and as you may have heard in that piece there quite a number of measures have been put in place the president or the chairperson of jap the uh, transport union i think should be on the line if we can confirm exactly what the situation is at the borders there for the sake of the drivers who are still cutting goods all the way to mali there do we have alhaji shamsu alhaji do we have you on the line we dropped his line uh, uh Ms. Anna, this particular issue came up uh, in the course of the week how do you how did you take it a lot of people thought that it was, uh, or the, you know, the story was that it was a uh, Boko Haram. But, you know, looking at where it is, it's definitely not <laughs> Boko Haram. Probably, the, you know, the, the, 
insurgents around that area uh, are called Tuaregs. So people also suspected that they could be Tuaregs. But then there was also the other school of thought that they could be the, those they call bandies. They are more, like, more or less like uh, uh, armed robbers who sit on motorbikes, come around the border there, and then they are able to uh, kill people and take their monies and all of that. But whichever way you see it, how did you take this news? Oh, it's sad that we've lost uh, life. Sorry with my voice, but it's sad that we've lost life. So, you know, and it's it's not uh, pleasant. But the talking is too much. I mean, we we all know by now that the sub region is not too safe. And I mean, we we always wait for things to happen, and everybody says we are doing this and we'll do this and we'll do that. I I. I Seriously, I, I don't want to even comment. Um, a lot I, needs I, to be done, I, and, and we're just mean, sitting when, back. When, when are we ever going to get around to do it? Yeah. I mean, it's just talk. I mean, I, I hope <laughs> they'll do something, but I'm, I'm, I'm just worried. In the area of security in particular. Yes, exactly. Yeah. We knew yeah. this. We've been talking about this, yeah. you know, all this while. And uh, we still have us talking about what we want to do and what we want to do. Yeah. Uh, it's not the best for all of us. And Miseru, maybe from, from your side, what this means is that when you, you are hoping that the drivers will not be scared and be afraid to cut goods all the way to the transit nations, which will also dwindle our business though. Yeah. Well, um, it is an unfortunate event. And um, what I can say is that I express my condolences to the Beirut family and I can only say that the measures that have been proposed will actually be implemented to forestall such a thing happening in the future. Okay. Those my amendments. Okay. Jake, would you look, you'd like to say something on that or we go ahead? <laughs> we we'll have, we'll have to go ahead, I think. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate. We, we all wish it, it didn't happen, but it's happened. We need to learn from it and then move forward as a country. Okay. West Blue Consulting says they've launched this app that allows you to know the amount that you're supposed to pay on your cargo and also know the stage or the status of your cargo any point in time. They launched this and introduced it to the stakeholders this week. The Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority, in collaboration with IT service partners West Blue Consultant Limited, have engaged stakeholders comprising mainly freight forwarders in a workshop to introduce new initiatives created to enhance the import clearance process as well as solicit for feedback from stakeholders. Sadi Yakubu, head of post clearance audit customs, said it is a major agenda of the Ghana Revenue Authority to sensitize stakeholders on all dealings and reforms within the trade and clearance space in order to bring relief to businesses and facilitate trade. Ghana Trading Hub, there have been some enhancements. It's not good for us to sit down, but for us to take the whole enhancement to the doorstep of the stakeholder. At the moment, it is the trader-customs relationship. It's no more sitting down to allow the trader to suffer, but give all the best education to the trader so that he can what? Comply. He said one major innovation is the introduction of the Ghana Trade Hub mobile app that now allows importers, likewise clearing agents, check for duties of their goods as well as track their consignments in the comfort of their palms. For today, they've been taken through the new enhancements involving use of what? Your mobile phone. You just download the apps and you are able to get to know. You can calculate your duties. You can also track your cargo and your, and your, your what they call it, your transaction at the pass. The customs official added that in accordance with the World Trade Organization's trade facilitation agreements, authorized economic operators would enjoy certain clearance privileges and advise their various freight forwarders to be at their compliance best in order to benefit from the rights. Ghana has also implemented all the WTO World Trade, the World trade Facilitation Methods post clearance audit, you will see that very soon, as been said, there will be a reduction in fiscal examination. Depending on the risk level, that may give the number of things that we'll be examining. We'll give you the leeway, and then we are also having the authorized economic operators. And it depends on the assessment of you uh, being a credible and compliant client that you may enjoy this authorized economic operators measure. 
Edi Akron, a council member of the Ghana Institute of Freight Forwarders, led the initiative of regular engagement by customs, but pointed out that there are challenges with regards to the 50% reduction in benchmark values of general goods reflecting on all consignments and asked for an improvement on the system. Recently, the announcement in the 50% reduction. If you go into the system, you easily can tell that for vehicles. But for general cargo, it becomes a problem because when you submit your you know your ideas into the system the system does not automatically reduce your value by the 50 percent then you have to do a follow-up and do an application i think then it becomes problematic because with vehicles the system automatically does it for you so why can't it be done for general goods get to know the amount that you need to pay on all goods that you are clearing out of the port there now ghana oil company limited that's what we used to call it they are now goil company limited they are the only indigenous uh, uh oil marketing company that's supplying marine gas oil to all the vessels that you see coming into the port they have held their annual general meeting the 50th edition and they say they are now goil company limited Doyle Company Limited has held its 50th annual general meeting in Accra, where executives, staff, and stakeholders were assembled for a detailed account of activities undertaken by the organization in the past year. Reports were presented by the various directors and auditors and the financial statements for the year 2018. Our CSI drive over the last few years has significantly concentrated on the provision of water and sanitation programs in deprived communities, support for health and sanitation, education and support de sports development. Also, a special announcement was made for the official change of the name Lager. of the company from Ghana Oil Company Limited to Goyle Company Limited for marketing purposes. I'm also happy to observe that Goyle has been the stabilizing factor against arbitrary changes in the price of fuel in the country, which could have resulted from unstable world market price of fuel and foreign exchange fluctuations during the year 2018. The board chairman of Goyle, Kwame Nabatels, lauded the achievements the company has made over the years. And According to him, this includes making company. sure the yes. company plays a key role in development in the local community. World share price peaked at five cities per share in April. 2018, but closed at two cities, 9% in December 2018. Shareholders and potential investors of world stock ship. However, they encouraged to acquire more shares in the company since the projections on returns on investment in the coming years are very he stated that Goyle has been resolute in maintaining stability in Ghana's oil prices against arbitrary changes due to fluctuations on the global market. He emphasized the company's priority to add on to shareholder value, although reforms in the banking sector affected stock prices negatively. He assured shareholders to acquire more shares in the Goyle Company Limited since projections on returns of investments are very positive. The managing director of Goyle Company Limited Limited, Patrick Akoli, on the sidelines of the event, explained the rationale behind the partnership with ExxonMobil for upstream oil exploration, where Goyle would enjoy 5% of the deal. He said the partnership is positioning Goyle as a local company with greater opportunities. Goyle needs to grow. We, we have to link up with the upstream. So what we are doing now is to take this 5%, begin to train our staff. You know, materials cannot be coming here doing oil business. We find some, so we, we find or we find or we, some of the local companies need to move out there. If we, if we find oil, and it will be found, it will add to the share value of what of God. How do we train our, our young ones if we don't take any risk? So we are taking this risk because as a movie has assured us that there will be an oil find. Actually, the Goyal Group, Honorable Kwame Nabatels, and the dynamic MD of Goyal, Mr. Patrick Akoli. When we come back from the break, we'll commence discussions on the role of the ship owners or the shipping lines, and then also Ghana Standards Authority and the Food and Drugs Authority. We will be uh, right back after the break. Here's innovation from Goyal that takes you further. New 
two gold super synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 lubes have been expertly crafted with the latest in liquid engineering technology, highly advanced for modern engines, prolongs oil change intervals, save you fuel, clean, protect and enhance engine performance. The way engines work has become complex and Goyle has innovated to stay ahead. Expertly crafted lubricant that work excellently with all petrol and diesel engines of today. New Gold Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 News. Innovation that takes you further. Goyle. Good energy. Dealing with a lack of information, ladies and gentlemen, since we are in a digitized age, and there's usually a lack of when you're, 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 you've brought in a container, you don't really know the status of the container in the clearance process. A mobile application has been developed that will enable importers check the status of their consignment and also the import duty payable online. So, this application is available online. It is called Ghana Trade Hub. Dear valued client, the Ghana Trade Hub mobile app is now live to make it easy to track your consignment and know the estimated duty payable for both general goods and used vehicles. We are pleased to inform you that the Ghana Trade Hub mobile app is available for download on Google Play Store for Android users and the App Store for Apple users. This is the best opportunity for all importers and exporters to know the duty payable on every good under transaction. You can reach the team for inquiries and support by calling plus 233-242-435-663. Send an email to support at ghanistradinghub.com. To remain updated, kindly follow progress on the following platforms www.facebook.com forward slash Ghana Trade Hub, www.twitter.com forward slash Ghana Trade Hub, and ghlinkedin.com forward slash in forward slash Ghana Trade Hub. Importers and exporters can download the official Ghana single window mobile app which allows you to track your consignment conveniently and also allows you to obtain your estimated duty for general goods and used vehicles. Please spread the message to everyone importing or exporting. The Ghana Trading Hub mobile app is now live. Download and never be cheated. This is powered by the Smart Ports Project under the auspices of the Government of Ghana and the Ghana Revenue Authority. Smart Port, improving Ghana's ease of doing business. Welcome back to Ion Port. Still having in the studio uh, Mr. Adam Imoruayana, executive uh, member of the Shipowners and Agents Association, and also Mr. Stephen Eduhead, Imports and Inspection Ghana Standards Authority, Mr. Jacob Amuakum Mensa, Food and Drugs Authority, Head Operations, Import and Export Control. Mr. Ayana, what do you do? At the port ship owners and agents association what, what's that association about in the first place uh, the association it's a couple of i mean all the major shipping lines in the country coming together to have a common platform to deal with issues you know that affects the shipping companies that's okay. all the shipping agents themselves okay and one thing that is important for all of us to know is that most of the companies here are agents for principals okay so they are not really the line sitting here these I are see. members or companies sitting here and seeking the interest of the main principals okay break that down for us uh, so if we see the people we deal with on, on on daily basis there are not the shipping lines themselves they are not say mess line or china shipping or you, you have max line you have all the other shipping lines what what they want to do what shipping wants to do globally is to have a seamless service all acro across the, the globe so most of the times whatever they do in asia or in america etc they want to replicate it in also the other countries mm -hmm. so you would see their presence here and then they would deploy all what they do in terms of IT infrastructure in terms of how they handle customers, in terms of how they handle goods. So they then appoint someone locally at any port to seek to their interest because okay. we all know that the vessels are very 
expensive. So when they are coming to a port, you have to have someone to okay. oversee the interest of both the crew and the vessel. Okay, so the shipping lines do have agents who are overseeing these things for them. That's correct. Okay. And then the shipping lines also have offices around here. Say you have a MOL or Mo. You know, uh, having offices around. You here. know, you can have a shipping company sitting here that's registered in Ghana, like you have MOL or you have Max Ghana Limited. Max Ghana Limited are agents for Max Line okay. globally. Okay. You know, so they they work under the directives of their principal, which is Max Line. Okay. So Max Ghana cannot do anything without directives from Max. I mean, Max Ghana cannot do anything without directives from Max Line. Okay. And there is always an agency agreement between the two parties. And clear cut instructions are given, and they, they work within a certain scope. Okay. And it's a legal. And, and how do these lines, the, either the agent or the shipping line itself, uh, interface with the importer? At what point does the importer come in contact with the shipping line? Okay, so what, what you're saying now is we're looking at only the, the, the processes, the customs processes, the land service processes. At the end of the day, I would no, say... No, you can, you can actually take it all the way back to from origin. Assume I'm importing from New Jersey. Uh, at what point do I start encountering a shipping The line? shipper, who is the one sending the cargo from, what did you say, New Jersey to Ghana, and the importer who is receiving it here are both clients of the shipping line. Okay. Both of them are clients of the shipping line. So it's also like agent in that you can put it as agent and principal for, for, for want of a better word. So the shipping line then deals with us okay. at the port of origin. That is the loading point. Yeah. And then we here locally then make contact with the principals, uh, the cargo, what do you call it, owners. Uh, sorry, guys. That's fine. Yeah, the cargo owners and ensure to tell them what is happening to their cargo when their cargo is shipped, uh, when it's coming, and then so on and so forth. But when it comes to importers interacting directly with the local shipping lines, it's proud to the vessel or the cargo getting into the ports of Ghana Okay. up until when customs does some release, what they call release on the platform and the e-platform. That is when we come in. We The work of the shipping agents is actually to ensure that the vessel comes in and bets safely okay. so we interact with the port authorities that is critical because yeah. like i said earlier the vessel is so expensive so we have to make sure that the port has all the needed facilities we to have bet to, the, to the, bet the, the vessel. vessel we have to also deal with immigration that sees to the crew on board uh, and there are things legal things that you have to go to we have to deal with the uh, health uh, what do you call them port health uh, for obvious reasons, because they will go on board to make sure that we are not bringing any contaminations into the country and make sure the people on board are also healthy and everything. And then um, oversee the activities of the crew and the vessel itself. Sometimes they need water, they need fuel. It's the, it's the responsibility of the agent to execute that job. Okay. And also ensure that the cargo on the vessel is discharged through various means they use the port authorities the stevedores the terminal operators etc okay so uh, two points you 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 start encountering the importer bef from the origin from the origin and then when the vessel also arrives in ghana after customs processes you coming again yes i would say we are in touch because both the shipper and the importer are our clients we are in touch with them right from the day the word go right from the time the shipper books the cargo hmm. not even when he brings the cargo to the shipping line at port of origin okay. but why right from when the uh, cargo is booked because he would approach the shipping line tell him that i want to ship x and x on your vessel and then negotiation goes okay. on so we are we talk to them right to right the cargo. From there. yeah right and from and there. when it arrives and you know they would have done the custom processes and all of that at some point they come back again yeah that that is correct at that point what happens let me take Why you back a little bit. At the end of the day, we have to also declare what we are bringing into the country, and that comes in the form of manifest. So we inform all the parties, uh, customs, especially for their revenue and other uh, implications. You have the narcotic board also. They want to know. You have the port authority. They want to know what is on the vessel. So we supply this information. Then we also have to inform the... It's not obligatory in shipping. 
but it's an added service that most agents do. We inform the importer that your cargo is expected to arrive on or around this time. Okay. And then, uh, so now it's up to the agent or his assigned rep to contact the shipping line and ensure that it comes at the time that we are saying is coming or around the time. Okay. Now, after the vessel is arrived, what we do as agents, because like I keep saying, and I've said it in several areas, we make money when the containers are on the vessel. Okay. So we start sometimes calling the clients, especially after seven days or a couple of days, we start calling them that your cargo is in, what is happening. Some people are able to take their cargo early. So what is critical to us is we're ready for you. Come and take your cargo. Once customs release the cargo, they have to come to us and show that they are the rightful owners okay. for that consignment or that cargo to be released to them. Okay. And that they come in the form of a bill of lading. Okay. And then so they come demonstrate to you that I've sorted out all the necessities, all the things that I, I need to sort out, and now I want to take my cargo away. Did is that what is meant? It's physically no, because all this is on the e platform. It's all done on, on, on the platform, right? So okay. all we need, because we see it on the platform as to what is happening in terms of customs release, etc. All we need is for them to come in with a bill of lading and tell us that I'm the rightful owner, owner. of this consignment. And I'm taking it away. And I'm taking it okay. away. So I'll let you end there, but the reason I really needed you to break it down is that a lot of people have questions. Some people say that I paid Fritz. I paid for the vessel to bring my cargo. It's got into Ghana. After all my clearance again, I have to go and pay shipping line charge again. They don't understand why that too separate payments that's why i wanted you to break down from origin your responsibilities and uh, online to your responsibilities now that it, that is clear i'll get back to you again after we hear from the the, the other two uh, standards authority Mr. Edu, uh, what's your role at the port thank you very much <coughs> sorry the ghana standards authority basically conduct what is called conformity assessments at the points of entry okay and these include the seaports the airports as well as the land borders mm. now conformity assessment is the process of evaluating or ascertaining whether a product or service has met the requirement of an applicable standard okay and technical regulations okay now conformity assessment involves several activities these activities are inspection so we may physically inspect what item you are bringing, okay. physically inspect the documentation attached to it, and then when there is the need, we may have to pick a sample of what is in the container. The sample must be a true representation of what is in the container, and then at some time we have to subject it to testing so that we could evaluate and ascertain whether the applicable standards have been met or not. Okay. The other aspect which I mentioned, which are technical regulations, may not necessarily be in the standards. They may be government directives or policies. Okay. Um, in Ghana, most of them are captured in what is called the legislative instrument. A typical example is LI-1541, which talks about markings and labels. So you may have to meet the specification of the standards in addition to how we expect you to label your products that are meant for the Ghanaian community. Okay. Now we basically do these things with the following objects in mind mm -hmm. to protect the consumer because we are the first point of call when the goods are being imported. Yeah. So we are certain whether the applicable standards have been met so that consumers do not suffer unduly. Okay. They don't have the luxury of time to pick samples to testing laboratories or to competent authority to ascertain whether they are good or not. So that is their primary object to protect the consuming public and then to ensure that there are fair trading practices. Why do I say fair trading practices? Those that manufacture locally, for example, and go through the certification where they have the mark of conformity from the Ghana Standards Authority yeah. are supposed to employ this marking and label. Okay. So if imports that are coming, we do not check the marking and label, then that would be an unfair ground so far as trading is concerned. What do you mean marking and label? What, what sort of markings do you look out for? If you are importing or bringing food item yeah. or drugs or general goods, we expect you to carry some indelible markings on them. 
what is the name of this product. Okay. Um, here we don't want brand names. Okay. If it is water, just say it is water. And then you can then add the brand names. But if you just leave what it is and just put a brand name, that is unacceptable. Is this supposed to be seen on the product? On the product. Okay. What they may call the packaging. Okay. And then issues like when it was manufactured. When will it expire? What are the ingredients in it? The country of manufacture, name and address of the manufacturer. Okay. These are all important when there are issues along the line. And you look out for all these? We look out for all okay. these at the point of entry. Okay. And then the third object is also to make sure that we reduce to the barest minimal, uh, minimal the number of substandard goods that come onto the market. So basically we do conformity assessment and it is geared towards these three aspects. Protecting okay. the consumer, ensuring fair trading practices and minimizing or eliminating the influx of substandard goods. Okay, be, be, before I come to Jake, now on that one, on, on the markings and labels, are you concerned about the language in which they come or you care less about that? We are very much concerned about the language in which these things are prescribed. And in the LI 1541, it is specifically says to be in English language. All items imported through the ports must be in English language. In English language. And I think basically the framers of the law knew it. That is the official language of this country. Okay. But that does not mean that you cannot have a French marking in it. But then the English is a must. If you take, for example, lubricants, sometimes I see over 18 different things. Languages. Languages. No. Yes. Because of the European uh, yeah. Union. Yeah. So it is a layer over each other. The first but one at least there English. is English. There is English. You pull and then there will be French. You pull, there is a German. Those that are destined for our country, it must have an English marking and okay. labels on it. So what if they, they, aside English and French, do you entertain any other languages? We can have as many languages as possible, but English should be there. Okay, I'm talking about aside if you don't see English on it, you don't see French on it, is it, can we entertain it in this country? If we don't see English on it, then it can't go, so far as I'm concerned. Okay. Now, what we do is that we detain the item, mm -hmm. and we have a phrase we call relabeling. We will ask you to transcribe whatever it is in the English, and then these goods will be under detention. You do an officer from the Ghana Standards Authority will come and inspect and make sure it is sufficient and enough and all the other rules have been spelled out, then you'll be given the permission to take the goods out and either distribute or sell. Okay. I, I, I have a lot on that and I'll get back to it. But Jake, the Food and Drugs Authority, what are your roles? And how probably you can also help us to differentiate what your roles are uh, from that of GSA uh, at the port. That's if you will be able to. Okay. All right. So... Um, FDA at the ports, our main role is to protect public health and safety. Um, we couch our mandate from the Public Health Act, Act 851 of 2012. And the Act mandates FDA to ensure that all regulated products, so we're talking about regulated products, we're talking about food, drugs, cosmetics, household chemicals, medical devices, tobacco and tobacco products, mm -hmm. all these products are imported into the country they should be registered before they get into the country. So FDA, our role at the ports, we are the first point of call when it comes to importation of these products. Okay. So then we'll have to make sure that the product is registered before we allow it in. For those that are bound for exports, um, they must also go through us. The product must first be registered, and then at the point that is to be exported, we are to carry out inspection to ascertain that what was registered is exactly what is being exported. We have had a number of issues of products that are exported outside the shores of Ghana, and uh, eventually red f flags are raised mm. because um, they do not meet certain safety standards. But if they didn't meet them, how were they able to go out of the shores? Exactly, that's the point. Um, um, I think we'll come to challenges. Yeah. But the issue is that for those that have gone out there, that FDA have perused, we realize that they did not go through FDA most of them almost all of them are not registered with fda i see okay so it means that they went through the back door and we are especially for the eu markets we are in touch we have those rapid alerts for food safety 
that every prayer that gets out there which is not safe the eu notifies the fda okay then we'll go through our register and realize that this product we don't know it's this um, exporter we are not aware of this export so that has been the challenge so our role at the, our main role at the port is to ensure that products that are imported into the country they have met statutory requirements which is safety efficacy okay these are critical for us so if it's not registered like my colleague here said we'll have to detain it make sure all the issues concerning the product with regard to its safety have been addressed if they are addressed it will be released and then you can sell it it, it will be given market authorization otherwise um, we'll detain it until the right um, procedure has been done do the products that you inspect or certify mm. go beyond foods and drugs Does yes it go beyond that yes so i mentioned cosmetics household chemicals tobacco uh, medical devices all these products we we regulate i see mm. uh, is, is is there a way to couch those ones to put them under a certain category for it to be very definite to say that uh, product under so so and so umbrella uh, under your because I'm sure you don't certify or, or register metals, for instance, no. or you do. No, we don't. don't. So, how do you categorize those products that if I know if I'm an importer and I'm bringing them, I know that once this falls under so, so and so, I need to see FDA before I move? Yes, we in fact, when you go to our websites, we have a, a catalog of what we regulate. Okay. So, I always say that when you want to import something into the country it is important that you get to the regulator in charge of that product so you do your due, due diligence do the background checks so for fda you definitely get to know that we regulate anything that has to do with the human body okay okay that's that's the kind of cut off i'm looking for sort exactly of. so then um we are concerned about the safety of what goes in what you use on your body okay as to how detrimental it could be to you so we want to make sure that everybody the consumer is protected okay mm. because somebody this week uh, came up and said that he imported and the fellow is from kaswa he imported fragrance mm. uh, into the country and he was told that fda and gsa says that uh, they categorize those fragrances under hazardous mm -hmm. and he didn't understand why you even have to come in in the first place mm. so i'm beginning to think that if you can be able to uh, put your 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 items in a certain category mm. like you just mentioned that anything that touches the body or gets into the human exactly. body you should definitely see fda okay. because people overlook that and that's they just move on that's right mm. that's right that that's unfortunate um, um fda has embarked on public education public sensitization we have engaged the importers their association we have meetings with them just to make sure that they get to know what fda is out there to do most of the issues that we've had with importers is they are not aware they get to the ports and then they realize that no fda should, should have, have met FDA. exactly then it's like fda has become a stumbling block yeah but that is not the issue you didn't do due diligence so i believe maybe the definition of what you are supposed to do isn't also too clear do you think it's clear enough yes but uh, sami you agree with me that if you want to do whatever you want to do you need to seek the requisite knowledge that goes with it so you can't just get up and say i'm going to produce water there is a regulator that must ensure that the water you're producing is safe for Ghanaians to to drink yeah. so you don't just get up and do anything that you want yeah yeah i, I agree i agree but uh, you know people also take a lot of things for granted mm. uh, in order to help people who take a lot of things for granted to also be in line uh, to conform mm. if we can make things a bit also definite and straightforward for them mm. uh, I for instance I want to be able to tell them instead do maybe you would also come in here be able to tell the direct distinction between what you do from what uh, FDA does at the port All right. um, <clears throat> if you look at the object it may basically be the same that is to protect the consumers but then if you look at the imports that comes to the country it is very varied so just as he rightly stated the food drinks pharmaceuticals household chemicals and cosmetics are regulated or under the jurisdiction of the fda all others are under the jurisdiction of the ghana standards authority 
okay. and it is very broad. I can't mention you know, petroleum and petroleum products, electrical and electronic products, arms and ammunition, pyrotechnics, raw materials, and what have you. But we also have the electronic system that help us. Mm -hmm. So the broad or generalized category is there for okay. importers to know. But if you do not even know, as you pass customs declaration for validation, it, you are prompted by the HS code, what they call the harmonized system code. Those are unique to every item. Yeah. So if it is a food item, then you'll be referred to the Food and Drugs Authority. Okay. If it is a household electrical item, then you'll be referred to the Ghana Standards Authority. So our publications make it clear that these categories are regulated by FDA or GSA. But then the electronic platforms that we do use, um, one of them is the GCNet, the other is what we call the Joint Inspection Management um, Information System, the GMS. GMS, also at least make this distinction. So that will also go or an added benefit to help clarify which ones are regulated by the Ghana Standards Authority and which one should go to FDA. Okay. And so, I mean, if I could just yeah, add to ahead. what my colleague said, um, Ghana Standards Authority, like their name implies, again, they set standards mm. and their standards cut across food, drugs, all the things that FDA regulates in addition to non-FDA regulated products, cement and stuff like that. So they set standards for everything that we regulate and we work with the standards. Yes, so that is one distinguishing uh, feature between GSA and FDA. Okay. So uh, whilst FDA is working at ensuring the safety of Ghanaians, the standards are set by GSA and FDA works with the standard. Okay. Yeah. But, but Mr. Du, the at what point does the importer start dealing with you? Is it at the time they are beginning to import or by the time the goods arrive into the country? We, we have always, when I say we, I mean the Ghana Standards Authority have always admonished importers that before you even embark on that trade journey, see us at the beginning. But that is hardly done by importers. Why do you have to see us? You may want to import electrical cables. What are the requirements for electrical cable in Ghana? You do not know. But people do think once I have my resources, I could just place an order and get it into the country. And they have the shock of their lives when they are told that it is substandard, it is of unacceptable quality, you cannot clear from the port. Some do meet us before they place others, okay. but then a big chunk of them don't. Okay. They only come to us when they are in the customs clearing procedure. I think the second or third step will ask them to pass a declaration to customs for validation. Okay then they are referred to the Ghana Standards Authority. Okay. But preferably they should have done so before, before. importing. But uh, aren't you then talking of, in particular to the commercial man, the person who is importing commercially? Because if I'm importing household stuff and my uh, bed and stuff and furniture from the U.S., do I still have to see GSA ahead of time? Yes. Um, <clears throat> There is a, a category we call the personal effect yeah. in, in the trading community. Yeah. If you don't qualify for personal effect, it could be an individual important. But if the items are of commercial quantities, mm. you still must go through. It must meet this. Uh, if the items are of commercial quantity? Yes. Okay. It still must um, go through the conformity. But even when we talk about personal effect, Sometimes uh, there is a dicey area. A typical example is electrical cables. The whole good may be classified as personal effect. And then you find electrical cables in them. And you go and check, you have about 500 coils of electrical cables. Each coil is about 100 yards. Now you know about the safety of these electrical cables. So for you, it is personal use. Mm. But assuming your house is on fire, is the fire restricted to your boundaries? It is actually a community or a public issue. Okay. So yes, there are times it may be classified as personal effect, but if you look at the quantities involved, yeah. and the items fall under what we call high-risk goods, goods that have serious health, safety, and environmental impact on the public, then it still must be tested, okay. and the green light given that it is of acceptable quality before you take it Okay. In. FDA. 
Yes, I mean, I, I, I say that with FDA, it is mandatory that, that an importer gets his or her product registered before you import into the country. It is okay. mandatory, and that is, in fact, because the product is going to be used on either on the body or is going into the body. Now, there's a saying that we are what we eat. The product must go through the rigorous safety checks for us to ascertain that it is safe for Ghanaians to consume. Before FDA will give you what we call a number, a unique number for that particular product. Mm. That means that we have given you the authorization to import the product. Now, when you import the product, we are at the port to check whether what you registered is exactly what you have imported. Okay, so then we'll look at the lab label, labeling, is it in English? Yeah. Is it as was presented and registered? If it is, then we just clear you, okay. and then we, you are giving market authorization. Okay. Okay. But, but are these for commercial? Again, I'm asking mm. for commercial. Of what about the individual uh, uh, importer who is just bringing one or two things? Mm. Do they still have to get registered with you before those importations? So, I mean, that has been a challenge. Mm -hmm. the, those individuals that are bringing for personal use, yes. what my colleague talked about, personal, um, yeah, um, effect. um, 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 personal effects, or what they call door-to-door. Door-to-door. I mean... I'm taking it to my house to just use some small, nice pomade. But I love this particular pomade that I've been using in Australia for a long time. It's a particular shade of Vaseline. And I brought a lot of them because I will be in Ghana for one year or two years. Mm. Do I still have to see FDA beforehand? Sammy, the question has been, what quantity should constitute personal effects? What quantity of the product that you are bringing in? should constitute personal effect. Now, we've not been able to define the quantity. Why have you not been able to do that? That should go to GSA. GSA no, not GSA, customs. GSA, FDA, customs, yes. all the they, stakeholders. Yes. We should be able to define what we are and saying. And you haven't done that all No, that while? is not defined yet. Why? So, well. But because that's what you are working with. That's what you are charging people for. That's what you want to streamline the system with. Well, and Sammy, you haven't <laughs> done it. Sami, that goes beyond FDA and GSA. No, like it's my within GF, GF, GSA, it's FDA <laughs> and customs. So the, 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 the issue has been people have imported product. They say personal effect. And then you go in there, you look at the quantity that they are calling personal effect. <laughs> and it's just outrageous. It okay. gets onto the market. And most of these products, because they, they say it's personal effects, they, they've not met the mandatory labeling um, inf, um, 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 issues. So they are labeling infractions. And this product gets onto the market. Then Ghanaians lambast FDA. They are products that are not labeled in English and they are on the market. Yeah. Meanwhile, they came as personal effects or door-to-door -door consignment. So then FDA, your hands are tied. In fact, we have had occasions where we had to confiscate personal products that are declared personal effects. We inspected it all right, and it had expired. The person says, if it, even if it's expired, I'm going to use it personally. <laughs> so what's the issue? No, 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 no. <laughs> you understand? One, no, we'll deal with it extensively <laughs> when we return from break. And uh, Ms. Ayana, I notice you taking a lot of notes and smiling as well, because some of these things also end up at your doorstep. Now, the gentleman I talked about who imported the, the fragrance said, because you had classified it as hazardous, uh, Omar, which is a line, was charging a lot higher. He didn't understand. Uh, eventually, we were able to talk to Omar, and then he got the understanding. And so I'm sure some of these things will overflow, and then they will also get the effect. But a lot of things, we need to get it clear. If you are saying that no goods should get into this country if it's in different language, and I can tell you, I've taken some juice. I'll show you the bottle. Full juice with different language on it, and there are a lot of them. There are foods and some instant foods here and there that has a lot of, you know, uh, these foreign languages on them, and it's creating a lot of problems. When we come back, we also talk about inspection and samples uh, when it comes to these sort of things. So we'll deal with all of that in extenso when we return after the break. In the meantime, when we come back after the break, you have the opportunity to also call into the program 055 30035 is the number to call, and uh, 020866 uh, 3161 is the one that you can send WhatsApp. I notice uh, uh, one Raymond Ajete, Raymond Ajete is calling from Houston, Texas, but through WhatsApp. I'm sorry, you can't call through WhatsApp. You must call the 055 30035. 
035. That's the number to call. WhatsApp text message. You can uh, uh, send a message via 020 866 3161. I'll read them after the break. Here's innovation from Goyle that takes you further. New Gold Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 Lubes have been expertly crafted with the latest in liquid engineering technology. Highly advanced for modern engines. Prolongs oil change intervals. Save you fuel, clean, protect and enhance engine performance. The way engines work has become complex and Goyle has innovated to stay ahead. Expertly crafted lubricants that work excellently with all petrol and diesel engines of today. New Gold Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 News. Innovation that takes you further. Goyle. Good energy. Dealing with a lack of information, ladies and gentlemen, since we are in a digitized age, on the, there's usually a lack of when you're, 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 you're brought in a container, you don't really know the status of the container in the clearance process. A mobile application has been developed that will enable importers check the status of their consignment and also the import duty payable online. So, this application is available online. It is called Ghana Trade Hub. Dear valued client, the Ghana Trade Hub mobile app is now live to make it easy to track your consignment and know the estimated duty payable for both general goods and used vehicles. We are pleased to inform you that the Ghana Trade Hub mobile app is available for download on Google Play Store for Android users and the App Store for Apple users. This is the best opportunity for all importers and exporters to know the duty payable on every good under transaction. You can reach the team for inquiries and support by calling plus 233-242-435-663. Send an email to support at ghanistradinghub.com. To remain updated, kindly follow progress on the following platforms www.facebook.com forward slash Ghana Trade Hub, www.twitter.com forward slash Ghana Trade Hub, and ghlinkedin.com forward slash in forward slash Ghana Trade Hub. Importers and exporters can download the official Ghana Single Window mobile app, which allows you to track your consignment conveniently and also allows you to obtain your estimated duty for general goods and used vehicles. Please spread the message to everyone importing or exporting. The Ghana Trading Hub mobile app is now live. Download and never be cheated. This is powered by the Smart Ports Project under the auspices of the Government of Ghana and the Ghana Revenue Authority. Smart Port, improving Ghana's ease of doing business. The breaks are watching Iron Port, and in the studio, I still have the Ship Owners and Agents Association executive member Adam Imoro Ayana. Mr. Ayana is uh, still here. Jacob Amuako Mensa uh, is the head of operations, import, and export control. Uh, with the Food and Drugs Authority. Also, uh, Stephen Edu is the Head Imports and Inspection Ghana uh, Standards Authority. I think I have a call and I have a technical challenge, so I would have to pick it straight. Hello? Hello, good evening. Yes, good evening. Yeah, please, this is Humphrey from Ashaim, and I want to contribute. Go ahead, Humphrey. Yes, please. Humphrey, we can hear you. Kindly go ahead. We can hear you, Humphrey. Okay. Um, first of all, I'd like to say uh, sincere condolences to our colleagues who lost their life at the border. Okay. Uh, in fact, to, to uh, the FDA man. Uh, please, uh, I've forgotten your name, but I want to find out from your outfit. You realize that from the vice president directive all the following agencies are supposed to conduct their examination at a goal but from what we realize especially with golden jubilee i'm a regular port user when it comes to golden jubilee you realize that customs will finish with their examination later on on and on and on you also 
see food and drugs authority coming for their part of the examination. And from where we take, we feel that uh, it's delaying the process. So I don't know if something can be done about it so that um, some of these delayances will be dealt with. Okay, thank you, thank you Humphrey. Yeah. Uh, so, GSA, FDA, about inspection, the joint inspection is now between you the two of you and customs, how is that going? And then maybe you tie in with uh, Humphrey's issue, the delay. Yes, um, Sami, um, the joint inspection as the vice president's uh, outfit proposed that is to be conducted for FDA regulated product is between FDA and then customs. And all other products is between GSA and then customs. No, go ahead. So the issue has been that the consignment is scheduled and customs, they are the first point of call. The agent gets to customs and the product is to be inspected by customs and GSC and F FDA. Now, when customs conducts their inspection, the agent or the importer then comes to FDA. The ideal situation is that a text message should be sent to both institutions and then with a time frame. But then the issue has been where the containers should be cited. Okay. Who is to coordinate the two institutions to move in okay. to conduct the inspection at that particular point in time? Okay. So since the agent cannot do away with customs, if the agent goes to customs and then customs conduct the inspection, then they realize FDA too must conduct the inspection. Then the agent will have to come to FDA and call FDA to also conduct our inspection. So then the inspection, the, the joint inspection as envisaged is not working as it should. Why? As in, let, let me just say that uh, I, won't, I won't have to cut you rudely. I'll let you continue that. But we have a caller on the line. Uh, who am I talking to, please? Yeah, good evening, brother. I mean. Good evening. Yeah, uh, I'm Mr. Ite, calling from Turkey. Mr. Ite, just give me a minute. Kindly hold on. End it. Okay. Yes, so the text messages are sent all right, but the system is not perfected yet. So you may have text messages. Hello, good evening. Uh, Mr. Ite, is that you? Hello? Is that Mr. Aite from Teshi? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please hold on. Just, just give me a minute. I'll get back to you. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, so something like I was saying. So you have text messages coming in maybe uh, midnight. In, uh, okay. Let me just let Mr. Aite go ahead. Uh, go ahead, uh, Mr. Aite. Oh. Hello? Oh. I can hear you, Mr. Aite. Okay. So today I'm going to have some small challenges. I'm I'm told uh, some few technical challenges with the uh, lines. Okay. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Yes. Hello? Yes, hello? Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Please, go ahead. Mm. Now, uh, I am Europe, no? Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to go to Holland. Yeah. Mm. Okay. 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 We are being microwave. We are putting the fridge. We want to check it in a view. When you sooner on the other side, but I will get the Oboka. I see. We get the Oboka. It's a yard, it's a good baby. A man of the chest in the swap, great view. Just a book, yet I dare run out the back of the Boka. We want for money in your family, man. Yeah. You will say that.
Yeah, you too. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. It is the same issue that we are talking about. A lot of people complain. I'll let you end on the, the inspection bit. And then we'll also talk about the sampling that she's talking about. So you end on the sampling. But let me also uh, uh, let the viewers know that we have some bit of technical challenge. That's why when you call, uh, we are not able to pick as it is. So when I tell you to hold on, please hold on. I can hear you. I will, in I will, I will invite you at the appropriate time. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. All right. So, Sami, the... Joint is the text message are sent all right, but um, the timing is just inappropriate. Then again, you receive the text message, custom receives it, F FDA receives it. Now, who is to rally these two institutions? You don't have a big brother. No. That's the problem. No, no <laughs> we don't. I see. So then. Everybody is a boss. Um, not so you are not that, agreeing among yourselves? Not that. It's not the issue of agreement. The issue is that. The container, container or the consignment must be positioned. Who is to ensure that the consignment is positioned? And then how, how, how do we get to know that it's positioned at this point for us to just go in there and conduct it? So there must be somebody who should coordinate this activity. And that is not done. So the agent goes to customs. Customs does their inspection. Then they come to FDA. FDA also does their inspection separately. Okay. Instead of us moving together, to do the inspection. Mr. Edu, isn't that interesting? A directive was given to three institutions, state institutions, to be able to do something together. And because all of you see yourselves to be authority on your own, you are not able to coordinate properly that you need an external institution to oversee the two of you and tell you to do that and that? Well, um, I would say not at all. We, we don't, it is not power struggle or authority struggle at all. Um, what I must also put on record that, yes, in some instances, the joint examination do happen. And that means it will be on the initiative of who the custom officer that is assigned onto it. But I see a bit of defect in the current um, operations okay. that is causing this. When the, when the container is dropped at the terminal, the importer is sent a message that has been dropped is ready for inspection. But then West Blues, the platform we use for examination, okay. then sent us test messages. In that test message, the importer or his or representative is not in that loop. Okay. So what the terminal... It only comes to you, the agencies. The, yes, the, those responsible for conducting the inspection. the inspection. So a date and a time is given. But of course, I cannot move to the container and start conducting inspection. When the, the importer needs to be there needs to or be the there. agent. So the importer will always make the first point of call with the customs officer. I see. So there are two when, things. When they have do. not received any text messages. When they have not. They only receive test message when their containers have been dropped and scheduled for inspection. So the problem is that two text, uh, two text messages are given. One is to, to you importer. and one yeah, is to the inspection. importer. Yes. Instead of one message to all of you telling you one particular time Correct. to be there. So we had always proposed that if it is coming from West Blue, which is the gems we use, they should just include the importer. I see. The date, the time, and then the terminal. Then we are sure the importer will be here. But as it stands now, um, it's a custom process that we are all tying on to. So the this, importer... This is not a big demand. Why is, it not taking, at all. why is it taking that? But just as I said, in some instances, the joint is going on. So it will take the initiative of the... Custom officer okay. that is approved. Let me let me pick this call and then we'll come back to handle samples. But I'll bring Mr. Ayana in at this point after the call. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hello, my brother. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, oh, okay. I thought the program is live. There's the program going on now on Metro TV. It is live, and you are live on TV. Oh, okay. So, am I holding on for the person on the line to finish? Yes, no, just go ahead and speak. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, uh, concerning what you are discussing, you see, the uh, Ghanaian, we have an attitude that, we have an attitude that uh, any policy will break. 
Any policy that we bring, mm -hmm. regardless of how we take, if it's good, that is going to help the poor. Those who in charge will frustrate the system and make sure it doesn't work. Look at the gentleman sitting there. You asked about the, uh, how do you call it, the uh, personal effect. He said he doesn't know the quantity. So assuming I bring things uh, like maybe 3,000 uh, sets of uh, cream to use, and he said because then it becomes his own discretion to decide whether it's a personal effect or not. The system does not work. Yeah. And you see about the joint examination that they say, the vice president has said it all right. But these guys will frustrate it. They will frustrate it. Believe me. Okay. And it's coming from there. It's not the policy. The policy is there. The laws are there. And then but he has a problem with the implementers. With the pool. Okay. But then these guys are sitting there who will frustrate it. Okay. That, that's point well made. That's point well made. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Uh, but let me remind you, uh, my friend, my brother, hello. Yeah, I, appre I appreciate that comment, and it's exactly what we are doing here. We are trying to find where our challenges are and then try to resolve them. And try to resolve them. And so we, we expect the comments that come on here to be of some decorous na nature. That's why we are. That's why we are here, and that's why. That's That's why the opportunity has been given. We know how uh, deep this can get, but we expect you to manage it a little bit for us, so that we all find solution together. Thank you very much for the point, though. Okay. So uh, definitely we understand that this is, when it comes to doing business at the port, it's quite emotional. We try to tell everybody that once you call, we're looking for solutions. This is not one of those noise environment or noise kind of program. We're looking for solutions uh, for country. Yes, you may see some of those loopholes and we expect you to point them out, but do that very decorous, in a decorous manner. And that's what we expect from you. Hello. Hello. Yes, madam. Hello, madam. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Yes, my name is Paulina. I'm calling from Tema. Good, madam Paulina, we can hear you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Go ahead. Yes. Paulina, we can hear you. Um, with regards to the joint inspection. Yes. You know, you were saying that it works at some point, but the point it works is when the document is here for scanning. Okay. So I'm wondering that if we can do that for scanning, which is yellow, we should be able to do that for the red as well. And the green, yeah. It's frustrating when you have to go around looking for uh, GSA, looking for food and drugs, and it appears to us that it's because of the, the, the separate negotiations that they want. Really, it's very frustrating. And then with regard to the samples, I'd yeah. like to find out how many, like in terms of quantity, that's re uh, required for Sample, okay. And then also whether it, it, it should be returned after the testing. Okay, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Thank okay. you very much, Paulina from Tema. Uh, Ms. Ayana, all of these is playing out from the Food and Drugs Authority and then uh, Standards Authority. Where do you sit? The shipping lines. What do you want to see that you are not seeing? Coordination and cooperation. Yeah. I mean, that, <coughs> that is what it points out to, right? So I, I, I don't think uh, we should be talking about frustrations at this point in time. I mean, if there's a policy and there are people who have been assigned to the policy to ensure that it works, I, I believe they should sit together and then resolve these issues. Okay. And if there are challenges, they should send it to the appropriate places that can fix challenges because when I'm listening to it, it doesn't look like a big issue. Yeah. You know, it's but big, it, it's it's apparently a big issue from how everyone is calling. Yeah. So I, I would say that uh, the, our appeal to the two gentlemen that uh, they, they seem to be very able men. So it's just cooperation. Yeah. Them. The the other the other part that I want to get. Hello, we have a caller on the line. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Yes. Good evening. Please, this is Abdul. Mujib. Yes, Abdul. From Adenda. Yes, Abdul. Uh, please. My question to your panel. Okay. They speak very well. Mm. But I want to know whenever a product comes, do they take a sample or the random? Okay. And if yes, frequent, I want 
I went down to buy tithe. Okay, so if, if yes, you want to know the quantity that they should take. Hello? Abdul, you are asking that if they take samples, what quantity are they supposed to take? Yes. Thank you. So, uh, Mr. Anna, the other thing that uh, Jake, for instance, also raised was the, the issue of not being able to know uh, whether the things are for door-to-door -door and whether you categorize them as, you know, why are they not able to tell that these things are meant for if it's for door to door and they don't meet the standards or they don't meet certification we can take them off i mean the thing is going to somebody's home it doesn't have the right label it doesn't have the right descriptions on them it's in different language and i want you to take it to your home Mr. Edu. oh sorry i don't know what they do from me coming <laughs> but you see the policy should run through at the end of the day whether it's personal effects or commercial items if labels should be in english and we are in an english-speaking country whether it's personal effects it should or not, be it should be in english you know it's but why is it not being affected jake but no but yeah. the, what we're saying is that if it's personal effects and we detect that it's not labeled in english we'll still detain it okay we'll confiscate it but he, th there's a challenge then they say i'm going to use it for my me and my family but you if it's not allowed you don't allow exactly so we confiscate it and then they come fighting us that i brought this item for my use and fda they have confiscated my i mean it's just because we have had issues where in the past they tell us it's personal effects and then you realize that this product gets onto the market and nobody can read the labels on it yeah so and there are quite a number of products on the market uh miss edu that yes, um, are in different languages china uh, uh, arab and arabic and all of that just to clarify um a little thing the the marking and labeling li we are talking about which is the li1541 actually makes some exemptions okay under it okay the exemptions are in twofold if the goods are classified as personal effect you don't have to do that i see if they are also not of commercial quantities you don't have to subject it to li1541 i see yes when we are not saying there is no clear cut definition for personal effect. When you get a CCVR, what is called the Customs um, Classification and Valuation Report, yeah. there are some that are classified as personal effects. We take it on that service, personal effect, but we want to cite or see what is in the container. The challenge is when you open it, I use a classic example of electrical cables. You see two pallets, 100 cores, about 500. And the question then is, would that qualify for personal, personal effect? And isn't there, there a ceiling for this personal effect definition? Correct. Currently, what we do work with, once custom classified as personal effect, you must take it must to be that way. No. But just as I told you, we have some six category of products that we have classified as high risk goods. Okay. If we find these quantities in them, though they are classified as personal effect, we will still just one second. want to do some personal. Um, uh, hello. Good evening. I'm going to keep you on the line for a minute. Are we okay? Good. Please. These systems are problematic areas for us. Uh, the electrical cables, the compact fluorescent lab, which we call the energy saving bulbs, um, LPG cylinders, fertilizers, and then lubricants. Mm. Yes, if there are 10 of one liter each, that I'm satisfied. It is personal effect. So I will not subject you to Oh, there is no country of origin. Ten can't be put on the shelf to sell for public uh, consumption. Do you think something ought to be done with the allies that you, you operate with? Or oh, yes, some, um, some of your conventions need to be tweaked? Yes, for example, the LI 1541 that we are talking about, I think um, it didn't make provisions for things like barcoding. Okay. Now, most of the products may have barcodes, which have all this information embedded in them. Mm -hmm. But you need a barcode reader in order to be able to tell that this is the country of origin, the batch number, this. The. So we are used to what we used to. We want to see all these written on them. Mm -hmm. And then the, the world has moved on. So okay. that is one area when it comes to the LI-1541 that I have found it very worrying. Perhaps, yeah. yes. It actually was 1992. 
Okay. And you see, 1992, these issues of barcoding wasn't, wasn't there really time, there. Wasn't really there. Okay. So that is one area so far as the 1541. Okay. And then the issue of a personal effect elsewhere, what they do, that is a custom process, uh, but we all feed into it. Elsewhere, what they do is they put a threshold on the value. Yeah. Perhaps they say all goods yeah. uh, less than 220,000 uh, Ghana cities could be classified as personal effect. Okay. Then we all work with it. Okay. At the moment, it's just too vague for, for you to deal with. I, I, don't, I don't want to know whether people mis, uh, misclassify or what. Yes, there are some that are labeled as personal So somebody effect. brings something like a whole container, he says oh, it's yes. personal effect. A typical yes. example is you open, we see floor tiles. Floor tiles. About 1,000 pieces. Maybe his house is like a castle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to pick the next person. We'll come back and deal with samples. And I'm not letting Mr. Ayana of the who because it appears that a lot of the uh, issues are coming <laughs> to your side. But we'll talk about shipping line charges. Uh, hello. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is John from Tema. Yes, John. Yeah. Um, for me, I think the issue has to do with compliance. Um, it's a big challenge, not just in the port and what happening now. In general, we seem to have a big issue when it comes to compliance. And as a nation, we should begin to look at it as a practice, getting the right qualified people. I'm not saying that people they are not qualified. Making also the laws to work. If somebody brings a container full electrical cable and says it's a personal effect. So what is this? Is that defined as personal effect? These are all things that we need to look at. I was all expecting that there will be regulations on the market being personal effect. Nobody monitors it when it goes from the port. Yeah. And nobody knows where that personal effect is going. It ends up somewhere else and by the time you realize it is somebody's house going through some pipes and it turns into a whole thing. So okay. we need to begin to look at the airlines we have. If we need to go back and then make sure we do a few changes here and there. Okay. And also look at the broader picture which is the issue of compliance. Okay. We are not making that conscious effort as a country. Thank you, John. So that's it. Uh, we will not be able to take uh, any more calls. Unfortunately, I'll read some few text messages and then we'll do the rest in here and, and try to solve some of the situations. What about the issue of sampling as well? Well, um, I'll start by defining what sampling is. Okay. Sampling, and maybe let's do this very fast because right. of time. Sampling is taking a portion of a bigger lot and it should be a true representation of that lot. And I always have this scenario that I give. If I give you a bowl of porridge, and I give you two cubes of sugar, that put it in it, you drop it in the middle, and then I ask you to taste whether there is sugar. And you taste by the corners, you will tell me there is no sugar, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. The good thing is to have it thoroughly mixed. And then when you pick a spoonful, it will be a true representation of what is. That is what sampling is. It is actually a skill. Sampling is not just opening the container and picking the first two boxes that your hands. So, have. what do you pick? It varies from each good to each good. I told you about standards for each of the products. At the tail end of every standard, it tells you how you draw samples for testing. How does the public see this? Does the public know this? The public may not be um, knowledgeable about this or they, it may not interest them, but we are also mindful of the fact that, yes, if you take a lot of sample, it is cost to the importer. So we always try to make a balance between what is adequate, that is a true representation of the whole lot, and what is also on the cost, uh, lower cost for the importer. So for example, I can use the electrical cables, for example. If you read a standard for electrical cables, we say, after every 250 calls, pick 20 calls. So if the container food, for example, is about 1,000, and every two, 200 I'm picking 20, or 250 I'm picking 20, by four, I'm supposed to pick what, 80 calls. No importer That's will allow you That's just too much. Just too much. Mm -hmm. So for example, what we do is we pick two calls. And I tell you, they themselves can attest to this. There are times that you may pick the one you pick, you send it to the lab and you test. It fails. You may want to do a red test. You pick another lot that passes. So somebody But do you return do you return the one that you took and it failed? Do you return them to the importer? No, we don't have to return. Why? It to the so if you take about five, me, ten of them 
and all of them fail, you don't return all let me, of them Let, to let the me water. explain. That particular test for the electrical cable is destructive. The ones that are non-destructive, typical example like solar, solar panels. Once we take it and I finish the test, we don't destroy the solar okay. panels. We give it back. Okay. Coils. I think it makes sense. The testing is destructive. Yeah. So I open it, I strip off the uh, coating, and then I do the test. I okay. can't return it. It's of no use to you. Okay. So they themselves are uh, um, 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 witnesses to this. But beyond coils, because a, a lot of the call, uh, the calls come sometimes for f foods. You know, you take frozen foods, you take chicken, boxes of chicken, and an importer, about three, four, five boxes of chicken are taken for samples, and you don't return them. All right, uh, frozen foods are not uh, under uh, GSA. So FDA, I know okay. that's coming to you. But the bottom line is what or I Or maybe say. iron. For instance, Ion. ions have been taking, and you know they complain that you don't bring they, they don't bring them back. There are there are some issues like um, goods like iron. We never pick samples for iron. I see iron. What we expect you to do is attach a certificate of conformity with it from a reputable institution. Once that is satisfied, then you are let to go on it. But the bottom line of what I want to say is every sample that is taken for laboratory test. A sample receipt is issued for it okay and then the importer or his or representative is given a copy of it so if the inspector took 10 boxes or calls of cables he will indicate and copy is given to you okay so that we can always cross check okay but we never go to calls we took two, we take two calls for it so what i also want to tell the uh, agents and the importers is that any sample that an inspector of the ghana standards authority take from you expect to have the sample receipts FDA. that will be the evidence that you can see fda sampling yes i mean let me reiterate the point that every sample that is taken we issue out what we call sample receipts which is evidence of the fact that fda has taken the sample and the sample receipt would contain the quantity the number of samples that has been taken now you talk about um, frozen refer consignment that we have, yeah, we, have, we have to pick um, um, samples. Yes, you know, our samples that we pick, majority of them, they are based on alerts that we receive. Now, we, for instance, we receive an alert that people were preserving egg fish with formalin. And we know formalin is not to come into contact with food that is going into the, it, for, for people to eat. So once this alert comes in, every egg fish that is imported into the country. FDA just picks a box. We take it, we have a mini lab now at our port office. We take it to the mini lab, we conduct analysis. The test results comes out within hours. Then, so by the time we are conducting the test, the, sum, the, the consignment is detained. When the results comes out and it clears the product, then the consignment is released to the consignee. Now, we are also we also pick samples, for instance, for pig feet when we had yeah. African um, swine flu. Yeah. So we need to analyze every pig feet or pig that comes in. Pig pork and product that, that what comes quantity in. do you pick? What, what we, That's what people are worried about, the quantity and whether you bring them back. Okay. For instance, with the frozen products, when we pick the sample, we take it to our, 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 our office, we pick the representative sample that we are going to test. Then we call the importer or the agent that we have picked what we need to use for the test. So please come for what is the left. Rest. Yes, the rest. We call them you all You always the time. call them yes, to come for the them. rest. We call them. So Sammy. when you pick 10 boxes, you call them and say, I've used only one. Come and take the rest of the nine. We call them, Even Sammy. if it's chicken I tell it's you. Christmas period. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy, we yeah. call them. We okay. have records. No, no problems. To uh, indicate uh, that we call let them. Me just tell but you again, Sammy, Sammy, finally, let me just say that we don't pick samples for every product. Okay. If the product is registered by Food and Drugs Authority, we don't pick sample, not even one. I see. It's only products that, that come into the country that are not registered, in which case we have to detain. And once we are detaining a product, then we need a representative sample to say that this is the product that came in and it's not registered. We have detained it and we have just picked the sample to, to indicate that. It's not reg registered. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for those who were asking a lot about the, the number of samples to take and all of that, I think that goes for you. But I would also let you know that we're going to delve into uh, the 
very basic issues one after the other in the course uh, of this program going into the future. This is just to highlight their roles and then we will delve deeper into all the issues, samples, their charges and all of that. So if you don't see all of that captured here uh, today, just be looking out for it. Once we are done, we're looking at their roles in the port. We'll be hitting the various uh, topics on the head uh, as we move on. But Ms. Ayana, I'll, I'm going to devote the rest to you because they've taken all your time. No, that's okay. I mean, Let's deal with the it assembly. Means that, it we'll means that we are doing something right. No, there's, there uh, are few that have come to you. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the sake of time that I'm shelving yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'll be quick. Look, listen, I had, I had you say something earlier that um, people are saying that they pay for it. Yeah. Uh, at yes. point of origin. So uh, I, I pay $1,200 to bring in my uh, Honda CRV and then I get to Ghana. And then again, shipping line says, pay another money. People don't get it why I have paid for that and I'm paying another here. The, what do they do here that requires some payment? To I, I would wish we would have more time for this. Go but ahead. Just to be simple, you know, at the end of the day, in shipping, there's something called origin destination charges. Okay. And then destination charges mm -hmm. it is origin charges and, and destination, destination charges. charges so those are charges outside the actual transport from the bet to another bet okay and then people should ask what did they actually pay for yeah you paid for the ocean freight you didn't pay for the additionals and you'll be told right when you are booking your cargo that this shipment is subject to the local or the destination charges okay you understand okay. me? Those things are made very clear. Okay, so the destination charges are the ones that they get back to the port and pay to the shipping line. That is correct. Okay. And even within this, I mean, in, in all this, there are other, even the free charges, sometimes they pay it here, right? Yeah. And, and, and all but, those but, things. But there have been calls about the, the quantum of charge that comes across that is just too high. I'm, I'm happy at least we are not an authority on an agency like uh, like them but <laughs> we are a business concern and we are private so you make business. money and profit uh that's not what i'm saying but at the end of the day i can't By speak for all shipping lines you know because everyone has a commercial base you don't know the cost base of every shipping line so you cannot really get into uh, why this is that and that is that you you can look at the no, level but we are handling you, an economy ayana and so uh, uh can there be a regulation of your charges why would you then you have to tell coca-cola or fanta that you are going to also regulate their their charges i mean then that would sink well for everybody but we should be careful going in that line and i'll tell you we should be careful because what goes into shipping like i told you the agent does a lot of work here at the end of the day what do i do i do quite a number I mean, running around or not running around, getting, organizing to get this vessel, but it's another thing. I look after the cargo till you take delivery. I look after claims when there are issues with, with this uh, cargo that uh, comes in. I do documentary uh, corrections. Yeah, you but, know. but... So, uh, when you say the quantum is small... Uh, no, but I that would also not leave it to you to decide, oh. in a, though in a free and open market, that I should say I will charge $10,000 for this job. You know that you are living in a country and a certain ceiling ought to be, uh, or a certain measure to be, need to be put to certain charges. You just, Coca-Cola cannot just get up one day and say that I'm selling Coca-Cola uh, one bottle in Ghana, 50 cities. Yeah, but that's based on their cost base and everybody knows the cost in shipping. At the end of the day, I'm coming into the country and then I'm having hits like uh, I have to pay what uh, something to Ghana Shippers Authority, which is on the cargo, mm. that is actually taken care of by the agents, mm. right? Uh, Ghana Maritime Authority will tell you that it's on the vessel, that is the liner charge. And I didn't get to explain, like as much as I said there are agents here, they have two different costing methods. Mm. Some of the shipping lines costing is from A to Z, which is even the origin charges up to the destination charges. It's part of the total charge. Yeah. Others also is broken off. It's just the ocean bit. Yeah. So it's important and imperative that whoever ships should know and ask what they are paying for. If you say you are paying for freight, what freight are you paying? The document you are holding is a contract of carriage and is stated categorically as to what you are paying for, where it starts and where it ends. Like I said, the quantum is another story, okay. and we can delve into and that. The, the issue of you know, uh, dollars, uh, exchange rates, and how much you, 
you, you know, the shipping lines charge for each exchange rate. You, you don't go by the Bank of Ghana exchange rates, do you? So, I mean, does everybody go by the I'm Bank asking, of Ghana? Do, do, I, I don't know. I mean, I think do Bank of Ghana has a rate and even the banks also have different rates. Yeah, but Is that do right? you go by the BOG? Um, do the I, shipping I, lines go I don't by the know. BOG? I don't know. I'm not sitting there, so I don't know. But okay. I would think they will be as close as market rate as possible. Okay. I wouldn't be able to just, you know, put a finger to it. But, but do, do you close. think at, at some point it would be important for us to sort of... Uh, uh, be able to regulate that a bit and let them go along a certain direction. Re regulate exactly what? Exchange rate uh, in terms of... If the, the exchange rate stabilizes, who is going to go outside the norm? Mm. If it stabilizes, it solves every issue, right? I mean, because at the end of the day, you see every, every pin, every peswa, end around a shipping agent or a shipping line is end on the vessel. Yeah. So every income is an income that the vessel generates. So you have to look at it from that, that angle. Mm. You know, but I don't think our people go outside the exchange rate yeah. like people say. I'm, I'm yeah. going to have to let them know that you in particular will be very regular on this program. I <laughs> will be dealing with a lot of issues with Mr. Ayana. And let uh, them know that you pulled me from uh, <laughs> Cape Coast. From Cape Coast. Chilling somewhere yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I had to drag you down here. I but went for a funeral. Thanks a lot, Mr. Ayana. <laughs> uh, he's an executive member of the Ship Owners and Agents Association. Also, Mr. Jacob Amwakomensa is the head operations of import and export Port Control, Food and Drugs Authority at the port. And then Stephen Edu, Mr. Stephen Edu is the head, Import and Inspection, Ghana uh, Standards Authority. Like I said earlier, you'll be seeing these gentlemen a lot more individually uh, because we'll be dealing with some of the subjects uh, specifically going forward. Now they're just introducing themselves and their roles so that tomorrow when somebody is charging you duty, you know that's going straight to customs. When somebody is charging you for a GSA inspection, you know it's GSA. It's not a port authority. Uh, if you go and see a lot of crazy in the port, you know it's a port authority. And then you can uh, direct your attention and focus and everything uh, to whoever is responsible. So we'll see you same time next week. And next week, I promise that the phone lines as well as our WhatsApp platforms will be very effective and very uh, organized so that you can also interact with us. Thanks for watching.